At the Governor's Committee meeting, um, Amy, at, at, at the end of that, held on March 4th, 2015, they discussed the share leave policy um, and reviewed the municipal code. And it was agreed to change the personal manual to reflect what is in the city code regarding leave policies. And they wanted to delete item D from 2.68.10, share leave code and to add the language unless specified in the collective bargaining agreement. So I went over this with staff, with payroll, and I talked with Amy about it. And there are, there's one area I know of that needs to be changed. It's a, um, it says 100 hours, let me see if I can find this. It might even be written in this for you. Uh, it says 100 hours in the policy and it says 80 hours and the code. So let me check. Richard, was there something too that you wanted the finance committee to look at? Yes, that is a good, that's a good point from there. So I, I think the intent of the committee is, is appreciated by staff. However, there are some I items that I'm concerned about, which is how much is enough. I know um, if somebody's sick and how many hours they need, who determines that if it's going to be, it seems like you're, you're heading towards leaving it open to the employees. Uh, and I'm <coughs> concerned about that because it could severely impact the budget. So we have a lean budget this year, and in the prior year, we actually had to take two years. We didn't because we didn't, couldn't identify everything, but now we do. And so if you have somebody who's on leave for an extended period of time and they're receiving the, this, which is a, a really nice thing for anybody to give up their sick time or their vacation time. Uh, what, what do we get to the point where we say enough's enough, or if it impacts the budget in such a way as say this person is out for six months to a year, we can't hire anybody to replace them, we're kind of in a pickle in that position, whatever it may be. So that was one thing that I thought we should talk about at the Finance Committee if you know the Council thought that was important to them. As far as cleaning up the code, that's an easy fix. We can go over that. We can go through the items. I think you did that anyway at the meeting. A little bit, yeah. And, you know, as far as making sure 100 hours is 80 hours in the code because it is 80 hours. And we did not, and I identified that with the payroll clerk. And so we can work on that. But I don't understand as far as how loose you want the share lease policy to be. That's the thing that, you know, I don't. And I, I talked with the mayor about that. And she said, well, let's bring it up tonight at the meeting so we can discuss it. <coughs> yeah, I'm, one thing that we didn't consider but was in the back of our head was that the whole purpose of shared leave is to bridge the gap until long-term disability kicks in. That's the only purpose. Okay. One long-term disability. So we just need to add language. Maybe instead of striking D altogether, we replace the language in D with, you know, shared leave, you know, it should be up to the employees who want to donate, not staff restricting, because it could become discriminatory at that point. Um, as long as the person's popular enough to get leave donated to them, if we can bridge the gap until long-term disability kicks in, because I believe all of the contracts have long-term disability in them, and don't we, and don't unrepresented people have long-term disability as well? Yes. So, and when does it kick in? Generally, it's usually between 90 days and six months. I think it's three months. So at 90 days, we're only talking about a short window where shared leave is even an issue, and then long-term disability kicks in. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the concern was that it was, as written currently, it's entirely at the discretion of the department head, and if they don't like somebody, they can say, no, nobody can donate any leave to you. Yeah. Is there short-term disability for the employees? Not from the city's point of view. We do pay for it, but it's the union. They have to go to the union and talk to the union about that. What I understand. So, would these kind of things help financially being able to get support to when short term or long term disability kicks in? To some extent, from what I understand, it's not a, a great deal. I don't understand whether the, if the state comes in, is involved or federally. I don't, I'm not, I don't know anything about that. But as far as the union, from what I understand, it's not a great deal of money. Can they only do either or? Get no. Six well, times or get disability. They can't yes. get disability if they're getting right. They can't. So because then they're off of the city's book, even though they right. would hold their position for a year according to the union contract. So yes, in that case. But um, 
So you're just talking three months then, I'm not so concerned about that. And I do think we should have language that addresses the yeah. fact that it's strictly a bridge because, you know, we don't want a situation where someone is declared terminal and, you know, just from a business perspective, then we donate, every single person in the city donates their thousand dollar bank to this person and suddenly they're on the books for three years and before they're off the books and, they, and there's no prognosis for them to return to work. I think anytime someone goes on disability, in order to <coughs> preserve their position, there has to be a prognosis that they will return. Otherwise, it needs to go straight to long-term disability. We bridge a gap to long-term disability and let long-term disability take care of them after that. Right. Uh, is it through our insurance company or something that we pay through MRS? or something with uh, disability the RMSA. or whatever. Isn't there a no, I think disability clause in there for, for 60% or something? We can, I can look at that as far as for eligible, but I don't believe I've seen that. Not, nothing like that. I've seen $100 a week for the union. I don't think it's an LNI. I think, yeah, there might be an LNI, but that's a different situation. For duty related. It's right. Is that what it is? Yeah, and then there's a limit to how much they'll pay for that before you're declared disabled and then you know, figure something else out. That's why, that's why most municipal employees have, at minimum, a long term disability plan in place. And it can kick in anywhere from 60 days to, nine, to I think 180 days after the injury. Usually, if it's six months, there's a short term disability in there to bridge that gap. But uh, it's you know, designed that you have sick leave you're able to use your sick leave before you go into disability to keep the premiums down. That's the whole purpose of having you wait before you collect this so the right. premiums are reasonable. And, and from our perspective, we just need to know that if we're holding a stock <coughs> for someone, they got a doctor's note that gives us a prognosis that they're going to be able to return to work. Right. Otherwise, we need to just bridge the gap from the disability and then go and go. We, we had employees out for... We've had employees out for long periods of time. It, it, didn't it just automatically revert to long term disability? Or did we just take it away? It was a different situation. Um, I came in on the tail end of the one I think I know you're talking about. And there was some, um, there was some, there was other things that were wrapped up in that, involved in that, that were not, that had nothing to do with long term disability. And long term does not make me kick in into the application process. That's right. Right. Yeah. And we get notice of that. The reason I originally brought this up is because it was such a gray area and mistreated so many times that we were, no matter what we did, we were 100% liable if somebody wanted to sue us and they'd win. Uh, we had a situation with Becky. Uh, she got like. 200 hours and we named out of it. And then she was, well, girl X in front. Uh, <laughs> and then we had uh, a situation of X in utility where off on and everything. And then when all of that run out and everything else, then X applies for state industrial and gets state industrial, which as far as I understand, is still X is still on state industrial. I mean, it's, it's just <coughs> abused and kicked around and everything else. So there's got to be a, some kind of a guy. Every corporation, everything else has a policy handbook, and that's what this policy is, and that's the way it's followed. You don't deviate from that for nobody. Nobody can deviate from it, and that's the way it needs to be. Now, as far as the shared leave thing, if the city decides, hey, we're going to stay out of it, okay, then, then we set that the employee is eligible to go out and uh, recruit the 100 hours of donate sick leave. And then it's up to the employee to call his friends or whatever and see if he can get $100. It's not up to anybody in our city to say, well, you can have it, but you can't. And get everything so everybody understands what their benefits are. It's just an application. The shared leave policy also 
releases itself because of limitations that are in the code, such as you can only donate in eight hour increments on any single event. I don't know if that's been followed correctly in the past, and that's something that we looked at to try and understand. And really, no, to my understanding, as far as I know, no manager has stepped in and said that's all for anybody in this situation. I think we only, we left it up to the mayor in any long term case, but otherwise, I think, I know this has been going on since I've been here, where people help others out on a short term basis. So, what you're saying is that if uh, somebody was going out and John from one department offers to donate his sick leave, he's right. only allowed to, do to donate eight hours to this person. Right. So, in two weeks, John can't come back and say, I want to give her another eight hours. It was the same. Oh, eight hour increment. Eight hour increment. Eight hour increment. Right. Okay. Okay, and then they are limited to, here's the one part where it's inconsistent, it says in our code 80 hours and it says in the policy 100 hours, they can't go below that, so we have to change that in the policy. Okay. Well, the That's policy, a simple fix. The policy is the one that says yeah, 8 right, hours right. per event that have to be changed. Yeah. The code says 8 increments. Yeah, that's right, 8 hour increments. Yeah, so that's oh. what, 8 hour increments, which is it? It's an increment per event. And so then you guys determine what's the event, so that's, that we have to talk to the attorney to plan on. This hasn't even been, that part has not been done. We want to get some clarity on that. Well, this is what I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to shut up. But it should not be a authority of the mayor. It should not be authority of the, of the city manager. It should not be the authority of the department head. It's what it says in the book. And that is it. And now, if, it, if, it, if I'm understanding this right, they have to go out and recruit eight hours at a time. Is that what you're saying? For uh, an increment of eight hours. So that means Donated. for each pay period they would get eight hours. Right. So so Perfect. if you had... You can't get two people to donate four hours to make an eight hour. Right. Well, that's true, too. Right. I mean, some people only have a certain you amount to give. Well, that donating to ten hours right. or eight hour right. increments per person. Right. That needs right. to be changed. Or, yeah. That needs to be changed. Okay. So I understand what you're saying. Somebody can donate 40 hours, you just don't want them donating 25 hours because of the bookkeeping that's involved with it. That's why they're saying 8 okay. hours. Right. Doing, doing 24 hours. Right. right. Oh, okay. Sorry. And the gift, the gift giver can't drop below 80 hours. Yeah. Right. So they yeah. have to at least have a pool for themselves. Yep. Of yeah. 80 hours before yeah. they can start. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what what are you looking for from council? You want direction on what else to change in this? Is it going to go back to governance committee? Yeah. I, I think it should go back to governance based on. And finance, I thought need to look at it. And our HR attorney does not look at it. Yeah. Before it comes back to council, needs to go to committee. Yeah. I can go to HR. I don't understand why finance. Council. I'd like to see it go to the HR attorney before it comes back to the government. We're going to make suggestions on things. The attorney will say, no, you can't do that anyway. <laughs> so I would think the HR attorney review would be the priority review before it goes down. Well, well, then don't we want to get it to the point where it mentions the bridge to long term disability? I mean, I think I'd like, I would suggest that staff could, could include a note. Tending in that direction when it goes to the attorney, the attorney might be able to come up with language that the attorney would approve rather than having a committee of amateurs come up with language <laughs> that the attorney would then have no, to rewrite. Come on. Council Member Garbage. Can we? Yeah. Can we just talk about the bridge to long term disability? Should we take a vote? Council? No, I don't want to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're fine. So get it, get it in the workshop. You can just get it in the workshop. That's awesome. <laughs> Other discussion around this topic or direction we want to Well, I just want I just like to say that uh, if there's a list, it sounds like you want to get rid of the management of it. I'm not sure how our attorney's going to look at that, but I'll get some feedback from her on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's going to give us her advice, and then you guys can discern it. But, uh, and I'll ask her if it needs to be cleaned up besides the 80 to 100 hours. That part obviously needs to be changed. And then, if you want to let me know, and I know that you want taken out management. Um, well, it's not that we want to take out management. We want to 
limit management discretion to some level that it's not arbitrary it's on its face. Right. It's a rule. Yeah, this but is the rule. Man set forth some sort of objective standards that the manager uses in in deciding. Right. But as it's written right now, the manager is perfectly authorized to say, no, you're blonde. You don't get any. There's other there's other that would get us in trouble with that. That's not a protected category. That could be a loose job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we so, not have right, that one. No, but right now, I know. just says the manager shall decide. Right. And that's yeah. too arbitrary. It shall be decided. <laughs> if I was a manager, I would not want to be in that situation. Exactly. Right, because, because anything you say can be... If I say yes to this person and no to that person, all of a sudden I get a personal lawsuit against me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to... Then the city would not back me up because I said mm -hmm. there was no grounds for the city to protect me in this. Yeah, it's just too wide open a current here. I mean, as long as we make it clearly defined, it doesn't matter because you just, our managers are going to, it doesn't yeah. walk outside of management's rights. Management right. is following the direction from council, that's all. Well, and, and under, there's a sex, page six, I think, of the policy where it says share leave and it gives you bullet points. I think those are good guidelines, too. One, like, if you go down to one, two, three, four, employee has abided by the city's sick leave policy. The employee has diligently pursued and is ineligible for other disability benefits, including worker comp time loss. The use of shared leave will not significantly increase the city's cost. These are all mm -hmm. guidelines and how, so I think the personal preference part, I'll have to talk with Sophia and see how we can navigate around that without making it, you know, well, take you. away all your rights. It would have been helpful if policy matched code, the part yeah. of the code, but it didn't, so that's why. Yeah, we need to tie that up, we will. So I, I don't know what we'll have back for you next week if you want. We're looking for something back yet. So no, but uh, well, not this next long, no, let's no, just no, make sure we write it. No, we okay. just, it needs to be back before the next governance committee meeting. Okay. Because well, I was saying, I thought there's been in here, too, that it couldn't be donated more than the, what they had approved. Right. But that, that well, the purpose of the employee man will receive more than he's approved for, at the highest level that year. So let's say my highest amount that I had for the year was 110 hours. Then I couldn't receive more than 110. That's something you might want to look at because that's very restricting. But that's what's in here, and that's what has determined the decision I made on an employee that we have, and that we have for all the team. But that's in policy, not in code. Right. Our point is, is code, we just need something. I think our crew intent is to bridge the gap to disabilities so that someone doesn't end up without right. a paycheck for a free period. And yeah, then once they're on disability, then we request what the prognosis for return is so that we can say how long do we need to provide, you know, protect our job. I think federal law or state law is, you know, is it when you? has some guidance. Well, that's how long we hold a job. Right. Well, so and I guess that's kind of confusing to me, and I can maybe I'm misunderstanding is, so three months is like what four times twelve is what four years? Mm -hmm. Four hundred and eighty. So you can donate four hundred and eighty hours, but our policy says you cannot donate, or the person can't receive more than what they've accrued. That's what the policy says, not what code says. Well, it must be. We're working on code. I'm saying? Yeah, I do what you're saying. That's, I'm confused at how the policy, the policy got there without code to back it up. Yeah. That's what we have to, you know, because and we don't know where this came from. That needs to be we need to clean it up. So what we're going to do is take the policy and the code and sit down and make sure they're congruent, run them by the attorney, and then bring it back to the committee. And Amy here tonight should be talking about it, but she'll be on top of it when she gets back, but I can work with Sophia to get started. Yeah. So, this, one of the things I think we were all in agreement at governance that really stuck with us is that the department has shall be terminating on a sick leave. That, that we really need to sure. figure out a yeah, way to yeah. make that. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on employee leave policy? Nope.